Hey guys, it's me again. I'm going to be going over the selection tools in Krita. This will be my last tutorial video for Krita 3. Point whatever. After this, everything will be done in Krita 4.0. I will be announcing uh, when I do a live stream of the new features and everything in Krita 4.0, so I will be going over all that uh, along with you for the first time. I'm not going to um, do too much in Krita 4.0 until the live stream. You know, kind of watch me struggle if anything is crazy or answer questions and see how it is. Alright, so let's get started on the selection tools. On the left side of your screen you have your complete toolbar and in the bottom here you have all of your selection tools. I'm not sure if you can see it on my screen but everything's divided up by a little bar here. So these are all in one group. Uh, the square one, I mean it's the shape to click and drag and it will be whatever square shape you want. Rectangles, perfect squares. If you want to deselect, just hit Control Shift A. If you want a perfect square, click, hold shift and drag. The same goes for the circle. You make it an oval, you make it a perfect circle by holding shift and dragging. If you want to deselect Besides using Control Shift A, just go to your Select menu. Um, you can deselect. Sorry, <laughs> you can deselect here. You can also reselect your your last selection. All right, so I'm gonna hit Control Shift A. Same with the square. You can click and drag, select, reselect. There we go. And on the right hand side, under Tool Options, you have a lot of options here, which I will cover in just a minute. I'm going to keep that open so as I'm clicking on the other tools you can see that those two options will change per tool. Alright, so the polygonal tool. This is just going to make whatever shape you want, or an, an M gun, I guess you can call it, with more than four points. The nice thing about this is if your tablet's giving you trouble, or your hand's cramping or something, you can just use your mouse and click along whatever points you want. Now, this will not close up until you close it up with the first point yourself. So if I'm clicking outside her hair here, I clicked on that first point, I connected it, and I just, I'm going to try that again, or redo this, so you can see that nice big circle, that's telling you that's your first point, and that's where you're going to connect um, your two points to make a closed selection. And then if you make a point that you didn't want, if you hit Control sh shift Oh no, I'm sorry, Shift Z. I'll get rid of your last point. Just click around, Shift Z, it's gone. The lasso tool works similarly, but I recommend using your tablet if you have one. Oops. Because it can get a little crazy with the mouse. It only will select based on one stroke. So this is not by no means perfect. And you can kind of see how some very delicate areas may not um, be suitable for this tool and if I let go it will automatically close off that selection for me so if you're getting a big chunk even though I picked up my pen in this area it was going to make a straight connection to that first point that I made the wand tool is pretty simple make sure I'm on line art it's going to select anything within that uh, shape, including the lines here. So, select part of her stomach. It's just one big empty shape if I turn the color off. Same with her armor. Close parts of her hair. Whatever close shape you have, it's going to select within that. Now, the eyedropper selection tool. I'm going to turn I'm going to go this blank layer. The blank layer does nothing because there's nothing in there right yet. But if I go to the color layer and I select what is it, the blue here, it selects anything that's blue. Now keep in mind I have different shades of blue on here. These are other layers with um, layer um what do you call these? 
Oh my gosh, I am so brain dead today. Uh, the different types of layers. Uh, I guess I'll just call them styles for now. I can't remember the term. Modes, layer modes. There we go. So this one is for the malt supply. So that's all the shading. So if I do select some of these, you can see that that color I picked is my base color layer. It's going to select everything with that color. It's completely disregarding the layer modes that I have for the shading and everything else. And that can be really useful. So if I'm like, you know, I don't want her armor to be blue, I'm going to change it to purple, because why not? And here I am, coloring. On that blue, just that selection. There you go. So now my multiply layer is automatically going to be affected by that main flat color layer I've placed. The light color isn't being affected because that was a solid layer with normal in, in normal mode. I can just turn that off. Turn that off. Give you a better idea. So, just keep it like that, I guess. It's interesting. It's also a, a selecting part of the sh um, part of her hip armor, I guess. I had changed that to a solid blue on the multiply layer. I was kind of playing with the idea of keeping that or not, so I just left it as is. But that base color is still there if I take it off. So it's still selecting it. Cool. Alright, so let's move on. Um, I'm going to select the gray part of her armor. It's the same thing, or her skin. Or, oh, let's deselect that. There we go. Or her hair. Alright, now the Bezier curve. This is kind of nice. Um, it's like the polygonal, t polygonal selection tool, except you have a very smooth curve, and as you can see, I'm getting points. So I can make a very smooth selection, almost like I'm a, a vector uh, point type thing in Illustrator. Alright, let me select that. So if I'm selecting parts for an arm, as you can see, it's got nice curves to it, so I want to try and line that up with my selection as best I can. So this is a really good uh, option to use instead of the um, polygonal tool or the lasso. You have a little bit more control. Um, it, it's just really nice. Look at that. It's right on the dot. Cool. So we'll just leave that. Now let's go back to our tool options here. So back to my square. We have two modes. We have the pixel selection and then the vector mode, which is right here. The pixel selection is going to select by pixel, while this is going to select by a vector. It's going to be much smoother. And as you can see, the thumb, the little icons here show that. So the vector is perfectly smooth. Now your action is going to change. So if I have a square here, I can make, I can do the intersect and select a second square. Now you can see that everything that's intersecting in my two selections before I pick up my pen, it's going to select that intersecting point. There it is. You can see here. I don't know what happened to the top line, but it's there. Yeah. All right, go back to that. Now the addition, exactly how it sounds, is going to add my second selection to my first. So now I have this nice big group here. I can just keep adding and adding and adding. And subtract does the same thing. Oops. I'm actually going to. Oh, sorry. Let me put this back to it. Add. There you go. I'm going to go back to select or, do, or subtract. I can highlight or go over some of the chunks around her hair, and it's just subtracting it all. Not exactly the ideal tool to use for that, but you get the idea. Same thing with the sphere. So if I don't select anything first, what it's doing right now is it's selecting everything except what I highlight or try to select. So if I select her face, it's subtracting that portion from my selection. So everything around her face will you know, I can move it, except the part I, I um, tried to highlight, I guess. And you can invert the selection as well, so if I wanted to keep that part 
invert this selection, and now it's just this that I can move around. But that's also just you can just use a regular mode for that. All right, and the size is really cool. You can lock the size if you want. So if I always want my circles to be more oval shaped, um, it will always be 235 by 238. So I can just click. I can't drag, but if I click and hold, I can move that selection to whatever area of my canvas I want. And that can be handy. Just make sure to hit the lock icon. It will get darker. If it's darker, then you know it's locked. If it's lighter, you know it's not locked. So you can go back to doing that. It does the same thing for the square. The polygonal tool only has the two modes and the actions. Same with the selection tool, or the um, lasso tool. The wand is a little bit different. So as you could remember earlier, we were selecting parts of her skin here, and the clavicle lines are not included in that. Now we want it to be, because if we're coloring, it's just going to leave a weird edge around those lines. I'll show you. If I hit Shift A, you can see it just looks really, really bad. And we, we just don't want that. So let's deselect. Let's go back to our wand tool. We can do a couple things. We can grow the selection. Oops, wrong layer. And it includes those lines. So when I color on it, there's no ugly distortion or bad, bad selections. It looks perfectly fine. Back to the wand. We can back to that. Feathering radius we can also try. I'm going to move the stalker over here. Okay. Now, the feathering radius, what it's going to do is kind of um, make a softer edge, but as you can see, that selection is going outside the lines a little bit. Let's go ahead and color that anyway and see how it looks. Alright, so it is including everything within that selection, but it's kind of very soft. I can keep coloring over this until I'm done and I'm on the wrong layer again, but you get the idea regardless. Um, but it's still not quite what you want. So you, you really want to grow or shrink that selection to get a cleaner look. I can show you what it looks like on a nice clean layer. Still the same. So if I keep coloring over it, it will eventually include those empty spots. It's just a little bit more work. My opacity is at 1, it's the highest. Alright, so I can deselect. There is a little bit of fuzziness outside of that line. Try to make it as dark as I can. So you have to be careful with the feather because it will go outside your lines. It's not terribly noticeable, but it is something to keep in mind. So attach it to the layer. Back to the wand tool. Alright, and the fuzziness usually works better with your color. So we'll just kind of raise it up. Go to my flat colors. Um, get rid of all this. Let's select the gray. I selected the gray, and I pretty much get almost all the color. I don't want that. If I turn this back down to 5, it's better. So it's just kind of saying, oh, well, you want to select this gray, but how much of the other areas around it do you want to select as well? So you can bring that down to 2. It's not bad, but this tool here is much better for that. So as you can see, Let's bring that purple back. Anything that is similar to that gray, I'm kind of 
coloring over. It still needs work because it's including her skin. We can actually take this flakiness back down. Let's make it six. There we go, it's so much better. Look at that. Yay! Much faster. That we don't have to be like, oh, I have to carefully go back and color in the lines, you know. No, we don't have time for that. There you go. Cool. And then the Bezier curve, um, pretty much the same. You can change the snapping for the um, the points and the type of line. I I don't see. You might have a reason to do that, but I don't. Otherwise, the modes are the same as the other tools. Uh, the ones I use the most probably the lasso, the polygonal, and the wand for my own work. Um, but I suggest you play around and see what workflows work for you. Maybe you know, the polygonal tool is better for you. Maybe you do more hard surface drawing and a nice hard edge is better for you. Maybe you do more organic stuff in the polygonal tool and uh, the Bezier curve is better for you. you know, it's all up to you. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much it for the selection tools in Krita. Pretty simple, pretty quick. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And hopefully I can get that uh, stream announcement out this week uh, with the actual set date and time. If you think I should just do a regular video like I normally do instead, let me know as well. Alright, so thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.